So, in the end, will the sun be to blame for destroying our planet? Or how about a huge meteorite? Or some kind of disease? Probably not. It seems that life will disappear for a very unexpected reason. Humans, animals, insects, fish, and most microbes will be wiped off the face of the Earth because of oxygen, or more precisely, because of its absence. Recent research has shown that the number of freshwater reservoirs with very low or no oxygen levels in coastal areas is increasing worldwide. Over the past 65 years, four times more oxygen-deficient waters have appeared in the world's oceans. What does it all mean? It's likely that life on Earth will vanish much sooner than the sun's energies dries up all the oceans. The end is likely to come in a little more than 1 billion years. But this doesn't mean that the planet will disappear too. The period when Earth is filled with oxygen will make up just about 20-30% to 30 of the total lifespan of the planet. So we're just temporary guests here. Just think how long that is – 1 billion years. The first Homo sapiens appeared only about 300,000 years ago. That is, the entire history of humanity occupies less than a half a million years. So relax. A billion years won't pass very fast. By that time, humans won't be on Earth anymore. We might master space travel and find a new planet in the vast depths of space. But why can we lose air? As the sun heats up, the planet gets warmer and warmer, and this heat breaks down carbon dioxide, the gas which is necessary for all plants to photosynthesize. Without carbon dioxide, they can't produce oxygen. With a drop in carbon dioxide levels, the methane content will increase. And this gas is quite harmful to us. Now, this all sounds logical, but this is a secondary reason for the lack of oxygen. The real problem is something else entirely. As the sun becomes brighter, it will begin to heat rocks on Earth, such as granite and basalt. These rocks will start to break down faster. When they collapse, they take carbon dioxide from the air, which warms our planet. If there's less carbon dioxide in the air, Earth should become colder. But there's a problem. The sun will shine more, and its heat will outweigh this cooling effect. So even if rocks take away carbon dioxide, the sun will blaze so much that Earth will still become extremely hot. Next, when the sun shines more intensely, it, along with other natural factors, contributes to the breakdown of granite and basalt. These rocks mix with carbon dioxide and water to make carbonates, which go deep into the Earth. This takes carbon dioxide out of the air, which means plants can't make as much oxygen because they need carbon dioxide to do that. Besides, volcanoes release gases, which also reduce the amount of oxygen in the air. So the sun, by destroying rocks, affects what happens inside Earth and controls how much oxygen there will be in the air. In about 1 billion years, the sun will become so bright that no rocks will be able to save Earth from its heat and the escaping gases will halt photosynthesis and oxygen production. And then, our planet will return to the state it was in about 2.4 billion years ago, to the time when the Great Oxidation event began. And this event was much more important than, say, the first Olympic Games or the appearance of humans on the planet. Billions of years ago, there was almost no oxygen on Earth. Instead, there was a soup of gases, such as nitrogen, ammonia, methane, carbon dioxide, and others. Yes, we have these gases in the atmosphere today, but there used to be a lot more of them in the past. It was difficult for any form of life to originate in such conditions. But after some struggle, it succeeded. At first, Earth was inhabited by the simplest bacteria, including cyanobacteria. They learned how to make oxygen using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. These bacteria worked for millions and billions of years and made so much oxygen that it began to accumulate in the air. This was what we now call the Great Oxidation Event. It was like a great celebration of life, because with oxygen, new living beings could appear. But by the way, cyanobacteria didn't learn photosynthesis because they were like, oh, let's make oxygen, it's so cool. No, oxygen was just a byproduct. Cyanobacteria wanted only one thing – to get as much energy as possible. And for this, they learned photosynthesis. It helped them store energy using sunlight. They used special pigments to absorb light, and the result of this process was the release of oxygen. 
This had been going on for hundreds of millions of years. And then, at some point, they made too much oxygen. This oxygen started to spoil other gases that had been there before. For example, it ate a lot of methane. Because of this, Earth cooled down a bit, and the Ice Age began. But that's another story. In short, in a billion years, we risk going back to that difficult time. But let's hope that we'll manage to move to another planet on our spaceships or come up with some other solution. And what'll happen to our home planet next? Will new life be able to originate there without so much oxygen? Well, it's possible, but it'll be much more difficult. This will require another source of energy besides the sun. It can be, for example, hydrothermal vents. And by the way, there are ecosystems on Earth that use this type of energy. You can find one of them in the Movile Cave in Romania. Imagine a place where there's little oxygen. It's dark. The sun's rays don't reach there. Over millions of years of evolution, a unique and slightly creepy life has developed in this cave. It was first discovered in 1986, and scientists are still exploring this place. The entrance to the cave is just a small hole in the ground. A narrow tunnel goes deep underground. Inside the cave, the air is filled with hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide, and there's half as much oxygen there as on the surface. A human can't stay there without a special mask. But for local forms of life, this is home, and they feel great there. There are several dozen species living in the cave, and many of them aren't found anywhere else on Earth. Here you can see strange little monsters, white snails, white spiders, centipedes with long whiskers, transparent shrimp, and even unknown species of leeches. Since there's no light in the cave, all these creatures don't need eyes. They're blind. But they have long, sensitive antenna and paws that allows them to navigate in the space. They also have no colored pigment, so all these bugs and spiders are either white or transparent. But if there's so little oxygen there, and nobody does photosynthesis, then how does all this life survive? It's all thanks to the unique bacteria autotrophs. They absorb carbon dioxide and produce nutrients. These bacteria are food for other organisms, and those, in turn, become food for larger creatures. So a whole food chain has been built in the cave, which provides all the inhabitants with food. Evolution has created a unique ecosystem that exists separately from the rest of the world. It's like a small universe that has developed according to its own rules. However, this universe is not expanding, because all living beings here can't live away from hydrothermal vents and autotrophs. Otherwise, where would they get their energy from? But let's imagine that the sun cools down, almost all the oxygen disappears, and the entire planet gets covered with hydrothermal vents. It's dark, and the air is filled with methane, CO2, and other substances. And somehow, life begins. Even people appear at one point. What would they look like? Pale, thin, and blind creatures with very long arms that help them navigate in space. They have pets, large centipedes or cockroaches that move silently on the ground. People are also quiet because they don't have lungs filled with air to scream. There's silence in the world. People communicate through touch. No one travels. Everyone lives separately next to their hydrothermal source. The whole world has turned into a horror movie in a billion years. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.